Hello, I'm so glad to see you again. Um, where we left off last time in James and the Giant Peach, Roald Dahl described the peach floating in the water like this. He said it was like a massive gold ball sailing upon a silver sea. And when I thought about the silver sea, I thought about one of my favorite objects in my kitchen, and that is my gurgle jar. Now, my gurgle jar is shaped like a fish, so it reminds me of the ocean. And then it even sounds a bit like the ocean. Let me show you how it works. Isn't that funny? I'll try it one more time. A little faster this time. There's a hole in the tail. And the water somehow gets sucked up there and it sounds so funny. And it reminds me of the water and of the ocean. So let's go ahead and commence reading. Chapter 19. Look, cried the centipede just as they were finishing their meal. Look at that funny thin black thing gliding through the water over there. They all swung around to look. Do you think you know what it is that's swimming around in the water? I have a feeling you might have a good guess. There are two of them, said Miss Spider. There are lots of them, said the ladybug. What are they, asked the earthworm, getting worried. They must be some kind of fish, said the old green grasshopper. Perhaps they have come along to say hello. They're sharks, cried the earthworm. I'll bet you anything they're sharks. And they have come along to eat us up. What absolute rot, the centipede said, but his voice seemed to have become a little shaky and he wasn't laughing. I'm positive they're sharks, said the earthworm. I just know that they're sharks. And so in actual fact did everybody else, but they were too frightened to admit it. There was a short silence and they all peered down anxiously at the sharks who were cruising slowly around and around the peach. Can you imagine their nervousness? Oh, boy. Just assuming they are sharks, the centipede said. There still can't possibly be any danger if we stay up here. Let me show you how high up on the peach they are and how far below the sharks are. Can you see the sharks way down there? But even as he spoke, one of those thin black fins suddenly changed direction and came cutting swiftly through the water right up to the side of the peach itself. The shark paused and stared up at the company with small, evil eyes. Now, friends, you probably know this. Sharks are not really evil. They just need to eat like we do. And um, sometimes people are afraid of them, but they're really not to be feared. Here are some facts about sharks that you might not know. They're, they do not have bones. They have something called cartilage, which supports their body. And cartilage is the same thing that's in your nose, in the tip of your nose, that soft material there. And also in your earlobe, that's cartilage. Now somehow the cartilage calcifies because I have a shark jaw I'd like to show you today. And the shark jaw looks very much like, like bone, but it's not. Here's the shark jaw. Look at all those teeth. Another special fact about sharks is something you might already know. If you have ever gone to SeaWorld and seen the shark exhibit there, you might remember that I believe it's a megalodon jaw that they have there, a reproduction of one. And if you peer inside the megalodon's mouth, you'll see that the teeth are not just on the outside, but there are layers and layers and layers of teeth lying on the inside. And even with this little shark, it's the same. If a shark loses its tooth, another one pops up behind it to take its place. Let's see if we can see the teeth laying down on the inside. Let's see if we can get the right angle. Oh, can you see them in there? Do you see the teeth laying down? Get a little closer. So some teeth are up and some are lying flat. Hopefully our friends won't meet a, fit, a bad fate with teeth like that. 
Slowly, oh, let's see what it says. Go away, they shouted. Go away, you filthy beast. Slowly, almost lazily, the shark opened his mouth, which was big enough to have swallowed a perambulator. That's a British way to say stroller. And made a lunge at the peach. They all watched aghast. And now, as though at a signal from the leader, all the other sharks came swimming in toward the peach, and they clustered around it, and they began to attack it furiously. There must have been 20 or 30 of them, at least, all pushing and fighting and lashing their tails and churning the water into a froth. Panic and pandemonium broke out immediately on top of the peach. Oh, we're finished now, cried Miss Spider, wringing her feet. They'll eat up the whole peach, and there'll not be nothing left for us to stand on. Then they'll start on us. She's right, shouted the ladybug. We're lost forever. Oh, I don't want to be eaten, wailed the earthworm. But they'll take me first because I'm so fat and juicy and I have no bones. Is there nothing we can do, asked the ladybug, appealing to James. Surely you can think of a way out of this. Suddenly they were all looking at James. Think, begged Miss Spider. Think, James, think. Come on, said the centipede. Come on, James. There must be something we can do. Their eyes waited upon him, tense, anxious, pathetically hopeful. Here they are. I hope James has a good answer for them. They do look, they do look worried in that picture. Chapter 20. There is something I believe we might try, James Henry Trotter said slowly. I, I'm not saying it won't work. I'm not saying it will work. Tell us, cried the earthworm, tell us quick. We'll try anything you say, said the centipede, but hurry, hurry, hurry. Be quiet, let the boy speak, said the ladybug. Go on, James. They all moved a little closer to him. There was a longish pause. Go on, they cried frantically. Go on, go on. And all the time while they were waiting, they could hear the shark threshing about in the water below them. It was enough to make anyone frantic. Come on, James, the ladybug said, coaxing him. I, I, I'm afraid it's no good after all, James murmured, shaking his head. I'm terribly sorry. I forgot. We don't have any string. Now, if he needs string for his plan, where would he get it? Do you think there's anyone there who can provide it? You might be thinking of the same creature I am. What sort of string, asked the old green grasshopper sharply. Any sort, as long as it's strong. But my dear boy, that's exactly what we do have. We have all you want. How? Where? The silkworm, cried the old green grasshopper. Didn't you ever notice a silkworm? I never noticed a silkworm. She's still downstairs. She never moves. She just lies sleeping all day long, but we can wake her up and make her spin. And what about me, may I ask, said Miss Spider. That's a person, that's a person, the insect I was thinking of. Were you thinking of the spider too? I didn't even know there was a silkworm. I can spin just as well as any silkworm. What's more is I can spin patterns. Can you make enough between you, asked James, as much as you want, and quickly? Of course, of course. And would it be strong? The strongest there is. It's as thick as your finger, but why? What are you going to do? I'm going to lift this peach clear out of the water, James announced firmly. You're mad, cried the earthworm. It's our only chance. The boy's crazy. He's joking. Go on, James, said the ladybug gently. How are you going to do it? Sky hooks, I suppose, jeered the centipede. Seagulls, James answered calmly. The place is full of them. Just look there. They all looked up and saw a great mass of seagulls wheeling around and around in the sky. I'm going to take a long silk string, James went on, and I'm going to loop one end of it around a seagull's neck, and then I'm going to tie the other end to the stem of the peach. He pointed to the peach stem, which was standing up like a thick, short mast in the middle of a deck. So the deck of a boat is the flat part on top where you can walk around, and a mast is where you would attach the sails. It's like a stick that sticks straight up. Then I'm going to get another seagull and do the same thing again. And another, and another. Ridiculous, they shouted. Absurd. Poppycock. Balderdash. Madness. And the old green grasshopper said, how can a few seagulls lift an enormous thing like this up into the air? And all of us as well. It would take hundreds, thousands. There is no shortage of seagulls, James answered. Look for yourself. We probably need 400, 500, 600. Maybe even a thousand, I don't know. I shall simply go on hooking them to the stem until, they ha until we have enough to lift us. They'll be bound to lift us at the end. It's like balloons. 
This reminds me of the time in the twits. Does this does it remind you of that time when Mr. Twit tied Mrs. Twit to the stake with the balloons? And then Mrs. Twit said some smart aleck remark and he sent her floating up into the air. I think that Roald Dahl likes to imagine floating in the air in unusual ways. You give someone enough balloons to hold, I mean really enough, then up he goes. And a seagull has far more lifting power than a balloon. If only we have the time to do it. If only we're not sunk, sunk first by those awful sharks. <clears throat> You're absolutely off your head. <coughs> Excuse me. Drink of water. Said the earthworm. How on earth do you propose to get a loop of string around a seagull's neck? I suppose you're going to fly up there and catch it? The boy's dotty, said Centipede. Let him finish, said the ladybug. Go on, James. How would you do it? With bait. If, you, if you're a fisherman, you know what bait is. It's something you put on the end of a hook to catch a fish. Hmm. What kind of bait would they use to catch a seagull? What would attract them? Bait? What sort of bait? With a worm, of course. Seagulls love worms. Didn't you know that? <gasps> Are you thinking what I'm thinking? Poor earthworm. And lucky for us, we have here the biggest, fattest, pinkest, juiciest earthworm in the world. You can stop right there, the earthworm said sharply. That's quite enough. Go on, the others said, beginning to grow interested. Go on. Oh, boy. The seagulls have already spotted him, James continued. That's why there's so many of them circling around, but they daren't come down to get him while all the rest of us are standing here. So this is what I... Stop! cried the earthworm. Stop, stop, stop. I won't have it. I refuse. I, I, I... Be quiet, said the centipede. Mind your own business. What could be more of his own business than this, friends? I don't know. My dear earthworm... Oh, I'm sorry. My dear earthworm, you're going to be eaten anyway, so what difference does it make whether it's sharks or seagulls? I won't do it. Why don't we hear what the plan is first, said the old green grasshopper. I don't give a hoot what the plan is, cried the earthworm. I'm not going to be pecked to death by a bunch of seagulls. You will be a martyr, said the centipede. I shall respect you for the rest of your life. A martyr is, is someone who gives their life for a cause. So will I, said Miss Spider, and your name will be in all the newspapers. Earthworm gives life, gives life to save friends. But he won't have to give his life, James told them. Now listen to me. This is what we'll do. We're going to read the beginning of chapter 21, and then I've got an, um, a little assignment for you. <clears throat> Why, it's absolutely brilliant, cried Old Green Grasshopper when James had explained his plan. The boy's a genius, the centipede announced. Now I can keep my boots on after all. Oh, I shall be pecked to death, wailed the poor earthworm. Of course you won't. I know I will. And I won't even be able to see them coming at me because I have no eyes. Poor earthworm. I think he might be my favorite character at this point in the story because he's just so, just so funny how pessimistic he is. And he says very funny things. But it might be a tie between the centipede and the earthworm. And James is very great, too. What I want to know for tomorrow is who is your favorite character? Is it earthworm or James, the giant green grasshopper? Is it spider or ladybug or that rascal centipede? I would love for you to illustrate a picture of your favorite character and maybe some character traits around it. A bravery or humor or grumpiness. What kind of character does your favorite character have? Until then, I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.